welcome back to another video. I'm Crafty Olga and I make vintage inspired clothing, accessories, and cosplays. So this week I'm going to be making a new dress. I'm really excited about this one. It's going to be super warm and cozy. Remember this dress that I need as a mock-up for something that then I ended up making as separates? Yeah. So I will link that video in a card up above if you want to go and check that out. But Basically, I made that mock-up and I love that. I wear that dress all the time. A few things kind of lined up and I have the perfect idea. Hear me out, this is gonna be a long one, buckle in. I found this flannel in my stash. It's cotton flannel, it's so warm. And this flannel, I originally bought, uh, I think like seven meters of this. Like, I'm gonna say late October, 2022. And my plan for this flannel was to make my grandfather and my partner's grandfather pajamas for, for Christmas. I was going to embroider their initials on them and it was going to be the absolute most adorable thing ever. However, <laughs> my grandfather passed away in November and that was really hard on me because if you don't know me personally, uh, my grandfather was like a father to me. He was like the person in my life that I turned to and I still made my partner's grandfather his pajamas and I made my partner uh, a flannel shirt but I still have like three meters of this left. Like first I thought I'll still make the same pajamas but make them, but keep them. I don't know, I, I, I just couldn't commit to an idea. As like time kept going by, I thought maybe a dress would be nice because I would get more wear out of it. I do have a lot of flannel pajamas I don't really need anymore. But every time I looked at it, it was quite painful. I think the time has come. It's, that's what we're doing today. We're making a shirt dress out of flannel. It's time to get started, I guess. I need to clear out my desk, as always, in every single project, and uh, get started. Alrighty, so the pattern I am using to make my shirt dress today is kind of self-drafted, but I used some of the elements from Gertie's Ultimate Dress Book as a base to alter from. I use this book a lot and I feel like it was a really great investment and I have added a couple more of her books to my Christmas wish list. Hopefully Santa Claus will come through. And you'll see here that I store my patterns in binders. I have a whole pattern storage and organization system actually. So let me know if you'd like me to share a video on that because I would love to. Anyway, for my shirt dress, I am using the basic bodice, the long sleeves, the Peter Pan collar and the three quarter circle skirt from the book. Some of the alterations I made whole new pattern pieces for when I first made the mock-up and then others I didn't as the alterations are quite simple and I just add those to the fabric. So for example, I'm using an oversized Peter Pan collar that I drafted from the one in the book. I just took the original one, traced it, and added more length to the outer edge, but I kept the neck edge the same so it would still perfectly align with my bodice. But for the bodice pieces, I simply drew a line in the back uh, pattern piece indicating the seam allowance, and I placed that line across the, or along the fold. And for the front bodice piece, I added around five centimeters of extra paper to the center front seam to have the extra fabric needed to form a button placket. For the cuff, I literally drew a rectangle with the size of my hand and how long I wanted it to be, and then I doubled it and added seam allowance on all the edges. From the mock-up, I knew that I needed it to be a bit more wide, so I did that on the fabric. And for the pattern pieces that I needed to cut twice, like the collar and the pockets, I traced them once with Taylor's chalk, and then I pinned the pattern piece down for the second set. At this point, I remembered why this fabric was such a bargain and why I had gotten so much of it. It was a dead stock and it was all the shop had. So I got the whole thing and it had been patched in this area with some very visible blanket stitches in what I'm assuming was some kind of very coarse string. This meant that the cutting of this pattern had to be very strategic and I would have to make some sacrifices and couldn't do as much pattern matching as I had hoped to do. I had to piece a little bottom corner of the front skirt pieces, which was fine, but I also had to cut the sleeves on the cross grain instead of on grain. This isn't a huge deal, but it did worry me that it would look weird with such a visibly directional print as a plaid. I actually spent ages on this. I took the whole length of the fabric into the hallway and laid it out on the ground to see if I couldn't puzzle out a better cutting option, but that mended line was in such an awkward place that this was really the best case scenario for me. 
After I cut everything out, I started marking the darts with Taylor chalk. This is like that uh, waxier chalk that you can get, and it washes off really nicely, but it doesn't rub off as easily as regular chalk. So I really like using it for flannels and wools that are a little bit more challenging to mark with other methods. And then I'm going to start my batch pinning with those darts. There's two darts in each front piece and two darts in the back piece. I like to pin my darts flat and then pinch them. This is a the best method that I have found for pinning darts so far. And I actually got so many comments about it in my Hogwarts Legacy blouse video. So many people were really impressed by this. So definitely give it a try. At this point, I realized that I forgot to draft a front facing for this. I mean, I think I did draft one originally, but it must have gotten lost at some point. So I drafted the new one by tracing the neckline of the front bodice and adding whatever length I wanted. I did seven centimeters here to match my back facing, and that includes seam allowance. What I mean when I say that I am batch pinning or batch sewing is that I do the things in batches. So I pin all the pieces that I can together, and then I sew them all, then I serge them all, and then I press them all, and then I go back to pinning all the pieces that I can after that, and then so on and so forth. This is a more efficient way to work, in my opinion, as I am not constantly switching tasks, but I understand that for beginners, it can get very chaotic and very confusing very fast with this. So for me, I find it saves me time and energy, and it feels like I can see progress a lot faster, which then obviously gets me excited to keep going. Before I forget, I also interfaced one set of the collar pieces, the sleeve cuffs, and the facings with a violin Vliezeline medium fusible interfacing. This is the H330, I believe, but I will leave a link below. I had a bit more footage, but it was very blurry, so we're just going to skip that. I am going on with my batch sewing as usual. I sewed up the pockets to the skirt pieces, closed up the sleeves, added the gathering stitches at the top of the sleeve, stitched together the facing pieces, prepared the collar ruffle, the cuffs, and put the whole skirt together. I'm also adding my tag to the facings now and closing the shoulder and side seams of the bodice. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do all of my serging and pressing for all of that. For the ruffle on the collar, I finished one edge of a long piece of fabric that was around five centimeter wide, and I added some gathering stitches and marked about 2.5 centimeters from the raw edge of the collar so that the edge of the ruffle will be flush with the shirt. Then I gathered it to size and adjusted those gathers, which was a bit of a challenge, but you know, I got it done. And then I sandwiched the other layer of collar on top and stitched it all around the outer edges. Then I flipped it right side out and gave it a really good press. Now to attach the collar to the bodice, I'm going to lay it on top of the bodice with the wrong side of the collar together with the right side of the bodice. So laying how I want it to be in the final dress essentially. I pressed my button placket in place really quickly before pinning to help the process. And to do that, I am folding it 2.5 centimeters and pressing and then folding another 2.5 centimeters and pressing that again. After I had that pinned, I was going to add the facings, but I realized that my back facing piece was too big somehow. So I decided to fix it before moving on to avoid like weird tucks and gathers on the inside of my dress. Now that my facings were the correct size, I pinned them to the collar and the bodice with right sides facing the collar. And I pinned that all together, sandwiching the collar in between the bodice and the facings. I actually unfolded one of the button placket folds back to the right side of the bodice and pin the facings flush with that edge. And I stitched that all down, including those front opening edges. This feels very weird to do the first time you do it, but as the beauty influencers would say, you gotta trust the process. Then I can press that in place, flipping the facing to the inside of the garment and then the opening edges back to their correct position. And I get the most gorgeous finish on all of this. I'm also going to do a quick understitch here to help keep my facings firmly in their correct position. And later I will also tack them down by hand at the front opening edges and the shoulder seams. And here is a close up of those front opening edges when you tuck everything back into place. I hope this footage helps to clarify my earlier explanation. Now I'm going to add the sleeves to the bodice after I already attached the cuffs to the sleeves earlier. Some people prefer to do this once they've attached the bodice to the skirt, but I think it's hard enough to maneuver the sleeve under the machine without all that extra fabric from the skirt. 
But as I always say, there's no right or wrong way to do things in sewing, so do what works best for you. I tied off my gathering stitches on one side and then pulled on the other until the sleeve matched the size of the arm side, and then I adjusted the gathers to my liking. For this dress, I pulled them all into the shoulder seam to add a little poof to my sleeve. Finally, I can attach the skirt to the bodice. The skirt back was a little big, so I did a couple of tucks at the dart seams of the bodice so they looked more intentional. And I also realized that I'd added a bit more to the skirt opening edges than the bodices, so I trimmed that to match as well. Okay, so we have come to a standstill. I've put the dress together, so um, honestly all I have to do is the buttonholes, the buttons, and the hems and things that I need to sew by hand. So I still haven't, you know, sewn the uh, cuffs and I need to tack down the facings to the shoulder seams. But I also really want this to sit and drop overnight at least. I'm gonna go and go to the craft store, I think. I need to get my gold thread for next week's project and also look at some buttons because I wanted to use the same buttons I used for my partner's shirt, but I don't have any of those. Then I thought maybe I could use something really similar, but all I have is like a five or six, I don't have 10. So actually, before I go to the craft store, I'm also gonna go ahead and have a look if I have enough fabric of this to make a bias, um, a bias hem? Yeah, to make a bias hem. Uh, otherwise, I might have to get some while I'm there. Today's Wednesday. Last time I worked on this was on Monday, I believe. I was unwell yesterday, so I had a little break from sewing and just life in general. And actually that wasn't a terrible thing because it gave our hem time to drop. Still haven't gone out to purchase my buttons. That's why there's still pins holding this closed. We can start um, working on the hem. I already have all my bias uh, pressed and ready to go. So if you've never seen me do this, this is how I do my hem leveling. I put the dress or the skirt on the mannequin, and then I go full Rachel Maxi floor troll. I use a tape measure and some pins to mark out my hem. I'm going to find the shortest part of the hem. So the bit that didn't drop or that dropped the least be cut on the straight grain. So that's not gonna drop, whereas everything else is gonna be cut on the bias and it's gonna have a lot more stretch to it. What I'm gonna do is I have my shortest spot. I'm gonna grab that. I'm gonna put my tape measure flush with the raw edge and I'm gonna measure that to the floor. I'm gonna let the skirt like hang naturally. So I don't wanna be pulling on it or anything like that. 21 centimeters. So now I'm just gonna go all the way around measuring 21 centimeters from the ground and then wherever that is on the skirt, like for example, at this spot, it's right here. So I have about two centimeters to cut off there. I just put a pin. So yeah, I just go all the way around and then I can trim this off where the my pins are and stitch my bias binding to it. If you don't have a mannequin, you can also hang the dress on a normal hanger and then to level it, you lay the dress flat on a surface like the floor or a big table and spread out the skirt and then you measure from the waist down to the raw edges, making sure your shortest length is what you're marking all around. Then I trimmed off the excess and started sewing the bias tape I made to the skirt hem with right sides together, repeating the same technique of folding back the opening edges that I did on the bodice. Before I turned the bias to the inside and pressed it in place, I trimmed the excess seam allowance. Then I stitched the bias down on the inside of the skirt by hand, encasing the raw edges and giving me a beautiful finish. And don't be fooled by the fact that the footage is eight times fast because this took um, about an hour, I think, for a three-quarter circle skirt. It takes me 45 minutes to an hour to do a hem, varying on size and kind of fabric, more forgiving, less forgiving. 
it may take me longer or less long. So taffeta takes me longer because it's a not a very forgiving fabric. Flannel is a little bit faster because it um, hides the stitches really well. So even if you mess up and they are visible on the outside, they're not really because it's fluffy and kind of fuzzy. So you can't really see the stitches. I ended up getting these pearl half ball shank buttons instead of regular shirt buttons. So I measured them to determine how big I needed my buttonholes to be and then marked that on one side of the opening edges. I decided to mark my buttonholes around eight centimeters apart. Then I made the buttonholes. To mark the buttons, I line up the two opening edges, making sure I'm matching the pattern and the seams and all that. And then I use my buttonholes to mark the position of the buttons. This is by far the most accurate way I have found to do this, so I highly recommend. Now I obviously had to go and pick uh, shank buttons that can't be sewn on the machine, so I went ahead and stitched them down by hand. I do this with my thread doubled so it's faster and sturdier, and I go through all of the layers of the button placket so that stays in place. And after sewing all 10 of my buttons, I was ready for the reveal. <laughs> no more treats, buddy. Oh, I know they're on the table, eh? No more treats, sir. Okay, bye. Right, so, final thoughts about the dress. I'm wearing it today. I made a matching hair bow. Um, these are really easy to make, actually. You just uh, sew a square and, like, flip it inside out and then you close the little gap. I added some of my leftover uh, bias binding to do like the middle bit where it like cinches the bow and then I just sewed it to a one of those like hair clips. I'm really excited. I'm really happy with the buttons that I went with. I think they add a touch of like I don't know, like whimsy and cuteness, and they make this like really a lot more feminine. Not that it wasn't feminine before with this giant collar and all of that, but I think it really like ties that in, that aspect in. I did add a little snap closure at the point where the seam of the like waistline is, uh, because I find that with shirt dresses, that spot always opens up for me. I think it's like a shape of my body thing. If it's closed, it's not like uncomfortable, it's not tight or anything. It's just that if, unless I have that that specific spot, if there's a button or a snap, uh, if there isn't, it just gapes open. I don't know what that's about. Like, I don't know. I just find that that's something that happens with me. So already, I usually plan for it. I really wanted the aesthetic of this dress to be like really beautiful. I wanted, you know, the pattern matching. I wanted the pretty buttons. So I really wanted the buttons to be evenly spaced. So I opted out of um, adding a button in that spot and added a snap instead, which is fine. It's just a little like invisible closure. You could also do like a hook and eye or something. I love the collar. Like I am absolutely obsessed with it. I really love the size of this. So the amount of room that I have to layer this, not only with like things on top, but also things underneath. So I can wear the dress like as is and you'd never know that I was wearing something underneath. I could also, like, I think that I could even get away with wearing like a, not very thick, but like a turtleneck underneath. I did wear this last night to get coffee in the evening and it was very cold and I wasn't cold at all. The only spot in my body that was chilly was the bit like on my leg between my skirt and my boots, so. I'm very happy with it. It's very warm. It's exactly what I had in mind for this dress. I also made Zeus a little bow tie. And now we all, all three of us, have 
something made from this fabric. I'm really happy with it. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me make this dress. Kind of wanna make more, but I also don't want to bore you to tears. So yeah, make sure you are subscribed to my channel. I post new videos every Friday. And I'm also going to be posting a new short every day up until Christmas throughout December, uh, starting on December 1st. And that's going to be opening the Prim Advent Calendar. This is not something that I was paid to do. It's just something I'm doing on my own. There's an announcement video already up on my channel if you want to check that out. I'm also going to be doing that series over on TikTok, Instagram, and Minerva.com. There's uh, links for every all of that stuff below. So you can tune in for that, but there's also going to be regular videos every Friday as well. So don't worry if uh, opening a calendar is not really your thing. That's fine. Yeah, that's it for today. That's all I have to say. And I already spoke too much probably. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.